Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the fastest podcast on the airwaves today, the Catch Corner Podcast, with your host, your three-time world karate champion, WCW legend, WWE legend, an Academy Award-winning nominee actor in the movie The Wrestler. Also, he's got many dojos around Atlanta, still teaches karate to this day. The man that has to register his hands in whatever city he goes to because he's bad and he knows he's bad. And I am your co-host, Big Shug, because I on this microphone, I blaze fire. We are here today to talk about a number of things. We're trying to get caught up on wrestling. There's some football talk. There's some basketball talk. Greatest time in the world right now. You got basketball, football, wrestling, baseball. Everything's on the table. What you want to talk about? Who, 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 the, the, first of all, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Recite. Hey, Recite. R-E hyphen S-I-T-E dot com. Metro Atlanta's only place to go if you're looking for foundation work, concrete. You want to remove a structure. You want to build a structure. Go to uh, Recite. Hey, hey, Big Ray, slow down. You, you know what I really want, I want to do? What do you want to do? I want to do a whole segment on like construction work around in and around Atlanta area. You have because, to like me. You know, because I'm telling you, there's such a great job. And it's not just building the community. It's helping the community. These construction guys and construction companies, they go out and have jobs for everybody. They hire, they hire in all the time. So I want to see, bring somebody on, being that we are sponsored by our construction company. I want to bring somebody on that runs a construction company that can kind of tell us and some of our listeners where they go to find a job at one of these sites or one of these companies. Or oh, really, how, how do you start your own company, your own construction company? Now, a word from our sponsor. It's Recite, R-E hyphen S-I-T-E dot com, Recite dot com. We're Recite. Of course, we offer all-inclusive site work. We're Recite. Of course, we have a dynamic site crew. We're Recite. We have secure foundations. We're Recite. Of course, we're good stewards. Recite redefines the way site work is done. Contact us at Recite.com. It's R-E-S-I-T-E.com. I talked to a couple of guys, One, two of my favorite football players, uh, uh, Jack Lambert. When he got out of football, he started construction. He went into construction. I've talked to so many former and ex wrestlers and football players and baseball player. And once they left a job, they still had a lot of years ahead of them. A lot of them started in the construction business. So anyway, I like to have somebody on who can direct us and guide us and maybe you know, somebody out there may need a job in the, in my community. Okay. And see, I like to give back. Big Ray, you don't. You know. don't give back. I'm you selfish. live on your high horse up in, what what do you live at in a damn way? North Carolina? Wil Wilmington, North Carolina, home of uh, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. You may have heard of him. The greatest basketball player that's ever put on shoes. And so, so where, I mean, where was he born? In, in Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. Have you ever been to the house or the street that you were born on? Absolutely, right off Gordon Road. Sure enough. That's is, is that's in the hood? Oh no, not in the hood. You know, that was uh I mean, not to get off topic, but that was a I mean, that whole case about his father, whether he was murdered or an accident oh, he, or something, it's he was still definitely murdered. it's still an open case. No, it's been closed. Did they find well, out? One of my friends it? worked. One of my friends worked on it with the SBI in North Carolina. Yeah, he was on his way back and stopped at a rest stop, kind of on the side of the road on ninety five, and two guys took him at gunpoint and killed him. And but tried to, but but they said this was because of some bet that either they said him it was himself. Gambling. They said it was him, a gambling. Let, let me get the question out. For I got let me it. Get the question out. Either him, himself, or his son, Michael Jordan, owed somebody money for a gambling, a bet. I mean, what what was that? I mean, whatever happened to that? That was that was rumor and speculation. Um, 
the two gentlemen, the two young boys that were 18 and 19, I think at the time that killed him and shot videos with the, with the ring, you know, the oh, couple of wow. rings and stuff. They tried to put his Lexus. He had a Lexus at the time, one of those little coops. And they tried to run the Lexus into a pond and sink it. But the pond was too shallow. So the top of the car was still sticking up. And they couldn't. Then once it got, once it went in, it was too late to, to hide the car. Couldn't and get so, it out. So, so the guys are in jail right now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Both of them. Well, wow. anyway, I just, I mean, I don't want to get off that story, but, um, yeah, it's off, sad. It was sad. I, topic, I, met, but... I met Mr. Jordan a couple of times. Very, very nice man. Um, extremely nice man. He was very kind to me. We sat at his table one night in Charlotte, North Carolina and watched, uh, the Riddick Bow and Mike Tyson fight. What and, table? Uh, what, what table? What kind of, his, was he this? had a, he had a table at this place called the scoreboard. I met him in the bathroom. Yeah. And um, we came out of the bathroom. I said, wait a minute, man. wait a minute, wait a minute. Every time white guys meet black guys, they always say we meet, we met in the bathroom. I was peeing well, I mean, beside of him. I was standing beside him and I looked and I was like, damn. I said, when I get done, I'm going to wash my hands now. But I got to shake the hand of the man that fathered the greatest basketball player of all time. He said, you too kind, young man, you too kind. And they shook his hand. He said, what are you he doing? No, I don't believe he said. Well, Ray, I don't you care just, if you believe you, it or not. This is the gospel, You embellish. Man. You embellish so many I'm stories. I'm telling you the honest to God don't. Hey, he, he, God, God rest his soul, but he had one of every flavor at that table, baby. He had a white girl. He had a black girl. He had an Asian girl. I thought he, he was. Like, he was married. I thought he was married to. He um, was. Mike, he was. Mike White. He was. He was. So what married. did you, listen? You want to throw him under the bus? Michael he Jordan. Already gone. Called he gone. Listen. Listen. What did you have there then? You want to talk I about had, him? Hey, I had two of my buddies with me. One of them had a broke leg. He had a cast on. He wasn't doing nothing. And the other dude drove. Ray. 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 I just. I, I, some of these stories, I just don't believe in. Dude, because... I've been blessed. I've been blessed to be in some circles with some people. That's all I can tell you. No, ain't no circles. It ain't like you were in. You was in the bathroom with him. No, we said he. He goes, come by my table, have a drink with me. I sit down for thirty minutes. No, no. He was in a while bathroom. While I'm talking to him, listen. While I'm talking to him, they interview Mike ringside at the fight, and I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your son's on TV. And he turned around just like this. He looks at the TV. When he turned back around, had did a he tear. pee on your leg? He, did he turned, pee he had on a your... tear. Had a tear coming out of his left eye and said, I'm proud of both of my boys. I'm proud of Larry. I'm proud of all three of them. One's in the Army. Larry's helping me with the store. But Michael is special. I said, you can say that again. Bro, bro, all right. You, you was in the bathroom with this guy. Y'all was in there long enough to look at a, a TV monitor. No, 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 you, no, no. You recognize. I, we used the bathroom. Oh, look, I, we walked can, out oh, Ray, of the bathroom. Ray, Ray, we shook hands. Ray, he invited me Ray, to his table. I sat hey, down Ray, for 30 minutes, drank Sky Vodka and orange juice because that's what Ray, he was drinking. Ray. And we watched some of the some of the preliminary of the fight. After about 30 minutes, I said, hey, I'm going to go back over to my boys, my table. Mr. James, it was great Ray, to meet you again. We shook hands. I walked away. Never saw Ray, it listen, Ray, Ray, the way we conduct interviews, right? Yes. Let me get the question out and you answer. But you 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 you're prefacing everything by saying we met and stayed in the bathroom. We didn't stay in the bathroom no longer than normal people stay in the bathroom. Well, well, you didn't answer that. You just said he turned around and looked at the monitor and I at thought the it was table kind of while we're sitting there with but all you of did, his women. He's talking all to of his me. women. Don't put the man business out like that. There was some ladies at the table with us. We're drinking Sky Vodka oh, look, and some now, orange juice. Now, now y'all was at the same table. We, I'm sitting at his table. He invited me to sit down. They said, come by my table, have a drink with me. I said, okay, sit down. My friends are looking at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, got my thumbs up. I'm over here drinking. And then hey. he's talking to me. He's got his back to the big screen. And I'm like, hey, 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 Mr. Jordan, they're interviewing Mike on TV right now. He don't even turn his whole chair. He just turns his head around. He looks at the interview. When he turns back around, the man was tearing up. I'm telling you. And he says these words. I'll never forget it. I'm proud of all three of my boys, but Michael is special. I said, you can say that again. You know what? Let me ask you this. How many kids do you have? I have two. And uh, what's the name? 
Cannon and Nellie Grace. What you said, Nellie Grace, I love all my kids, but Nellie Grace is special. I say it every day. So she's a little different from your son, you said? Love them both, but love love them differently, but love them the same, but love them differently. That have nothing to do with love, expectation. Oh, my goodness, yeah. I expect way more out of Nellie Grace. She's so smart. She's so independent and strong-willed like her daddy. she got her daddy's personality and her mama's good looks. So, but what about your son? He's my a pretty cool is, my guy. My son is brilliant. My son is brilliant. I ain't got nothing to worry about there. But he's good not kid. special. Uh, he is in his way, yeah. All right. He is well, in his right. way. I mean, I just never know. I I think I think well, all you my got, kids. You got how many kids? I think three, and I think they all are special. They all are special. I okay. expect it's special, special from different ways. I don't right? feel I don't feel one way about one or the other. I sure feel that do. they all are special, and they all are capable of achieving whatever they want to be Correct. and Correct. do in life. That's right. Only All right. In so let so so anyway, that's enough Michael Jordan talk. And well, Ray, you started it. Ray and well, this is what we're supposed to do on here. Right. And on. Ray, Did you watch but the that, NBA last night? Speaking but of Michael that Jordan? story with we ain't moving on yet. That story right there just kind of reminds remind me of the story you made up with um Rick Flair. What the, I can tell you the same story. It'll be verbatim as I told it when I told it the first time. Can you shorten that story? You told let me now. Let me let let me keep you on track. You said that you and Ric Flair hung out together at least three different times. And when you said hanging out, were you guys in the bathroom? No, what? we were at a, we were at a place in Charlotte that he basically rented out after a. A Monday Night Nitro back in the Ooh. early nineties. So it was a, you was invited. Exact, absolutely. So he knew you by name to put you on a guest he list. Knew, he knew his neighbor. Buzz no, Cable. no, we we don't. Let's keep this on just you and him. This is a story of Big Ray, absolutely, and Rick Flair, right? So. You mean to tell me Ric Flair invited you to his party? He didn't per se say, okay, Ray Kaziah is on the guest list, but Buzz Cagle was, and I was with Buzz. Whoever Buzz, I don't know what was Buzz. Buzz, Buzz is Buzz his saw... neighbor, was his neighbor for 17 years in Charlotte. Oh, neighbor. so so him and Rick were more friends than you and Rick. Of course. I mean, they're neighbors, okay. and that's how I met okay. Rick. So you so so you invited you was invited to Rick party and you the two or three of them you said and yeah. you guys had a few drinks. Correct. Correct. He had how many drinks? drinks how many did. drinks? How many drinks did you guys have together? I had one drink with him, like we're sitting here talking, and then I'm go sing on stage because you know I am a vocalist, that's what I do. And we asked Rick what song he wanted to hear. And he wanted to hear Great Balls of Fire. And that's a piano song. And my man had a guitar. And that's what I said. I said, hey, that's a piano so, song. So soon as y'all got soon a guitar. As all, soon as y'all came out the bathroom, Rick just announced to you, how, go how sing you, Great you, Balls of Fire. How you got me in the bathroom with this dude? You got me and James Jordan in that story all mixed up. I oh, wasn't that's in the bathroom a different story. Rick. Oh, okay. All right. I wasn't with all Rick right. in the bathroom. But Rick, Rick just asked if you knew the words of... Uh, to great balls of fire, right? And I do know the words. You shake my nerves and you ride on my brain. I kind of hey, loved. I'm a man. Hey, bro, brain. bro, bro. But anyway, I don't listen to that. I don't listen to that kind of music. I understand. That, I understand. That's a little richer. Should. That's a little richer. But you try to make it sound like Elvis. You understand what I'm saying? And we all know what Elvis got his stuff from. What are you trying to say, man? He stole it stole, from Little Richard. Trying to say Elvis stole his stuff from the black Little Richard. Little Richard and James Brown. That way anyway. he's got all his stuff. But anyway, anyway, so 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 you and um uh, that was one night. The other night was at Gaddison's, Kenny Gaddison, who used to play for the Hornets, played for Virginia Tech, a uh, huge basketball guy, played for the Hornets, had his own club over there in um Quail Hollow in Charlotte, and uh flared through one of his parties. 
back then. And we went to that one and hung out there and it was a great night. Everybody had a great time. I sat at a table and ate dinner with, uh, one Arn Anderson. He was at our table. Um, Rick rude was there a, a lot of different people, but, but that's the table that I was sitting at. But who, who it was a Ric Flair party. Oh, it was Rick. It was definitely Rick's party. Rick rented out. Okay. Gadsden. All right. So you got to meet Rick for a second time. Yeah. That was the first time was then, then, um, one night at a restaurant in in Charlotte called Harper's, which is I found out. We ain't got to give them no shout out. We ain't got to give them. No oh, they're name. closed. Just they're they're, the they're closed. They're closed okay, up. All right, so they're we don't need up. to bring up their name on this. No, but podcast. This, for anybody listening, if anybody's listening and they know anything about Charlotte, he hung out at Harper's. Matter of fact, Reed got missing his son. And I helped find hey, Reed bro, that night. Listen, we 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 not. And we're Reed not was going like now. Reed was like four years old. That's how long. Well, ago we, we, hey, hey Reed, kid. we're not we're not going there with the man's son. Leave I'm just saying, kids out of it. I didn't I'm ask sure. you that. So anyway, so what was your third time? That was the, th the third time was at the South End Brewery, and that was oh, the okay. night when we were singing songs and, and and having a good time. Yeah, and we asked. He asked Mondo. He asked Mongo McMichael what he wanted to hear. And, Ma and Mongo said the goddamn TV. He said he, he didn't want to hear no music. He was trying to watch Sports Center. Okay, said, all right. I want to hear I mean, the TV. Yo, so you were one of the boys. I was in the click that night, matter of fact. For three times. So let me ask you this. I, I like to hear your stories, but um, what about the story that you were with me in California? I forgot oh, yeah. what show was that? What autograph signed and meet and greet? It was, it was, the, it was the WrestleMania. Greet. It was the WrestleMania. Wrestle, it was it was WrestleCon. WrestleCon. Yeah, and um, everybody was there. Goldberg was there. Um, right. Um, we met, we met was Mr. There. Goldberg. Everybody was there. Uh, everybody was there. A lot of different wrestlers, and it just so happened to be Ric Flair Day too. Yeah, absolutely. Your buddy. Your buddy. Somebody now, you've seen. Hello, no, no, I'm not asking you in the question now. Don't start uh, trying to explain. I want to. I want to get to that. So, you and Rick, like you said, Rick hung out three times. I know Rick. Rick. Rick is my buddy. Rick treat treat you nice. If he, he's he's, I love Rick. You got see a Rick Flair. What is that behind you over your left shoulder? That's one of his robes. I got another one over here. I got his wrestling boot. I've got a couple of autographed pictures. I got a, I got a uh, what do you call them? Little uh, the, the little dolls that you have, the little uh, action figures. So, but, so uh, you got all that. Rick Flair is your man. I, I can understand that. Rick yeah, Flair is I got, your man. I got so, a, so, 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 since you and Rick were such good friends, I, I wanted to make sure because <laughs> it was a long line. Everybody was in line. They had oh, yeah. some table, some table have, you know, maybe a few hundred people in line. Some, some had 25 or 30 people in line waiting to take pictures. And some people like Ric Flair have a line look like it, at least a thousand people in there. Right. Yes. So I think we walked past this particular room. We couldn't see in, but we saw the board said Ric Flair. So I said, hey, let's go see your boy, Ric Flair. And he said, I would love to, Cat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cat. And yeah, I said, I think I that's said, exactly how it went. Yeah. And I said to you, let's wait to the line because right now he's working. I want you guys to be able to greet each other. Hello, old friends. Old, old buddies. Old friends. Yes. Old, old good old buddies. buddies. Good guys from a <laughs> same old place. Style. Party together, <laughs> live together, drink together, live so, together. <laughs> yeah. So, so finally the line went down. We decided let's go in. Of course, Ric Flair got security guard all the way around the place, protect him. I don't, don't know why. Don't forget about me walking in front of you now. Don't forget yeah, about so that. Part. I, so this is what I don't understand. Why do or why does wrestlers need security guards? Some of them are not as tough as you. I mean, if somebody did something at one of these events, it could happen, but if somebody did something at one of these events, the first thing I would do is just, you know, tell them, no, don't put your hand on me. Don't. We can take pictures. 
I do this. I've never had a problem. So I've never understood why some of them had security guards. But Ric Flair had a couple of security guards. And as we headed that way, I said, let's go down and see Rick. You had your hand, I remember you had your hands in your pocket. Yeah, your hands in your pocket. And you know, if, if people know you, they know you built like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. And you had some Levi's on that couldn't really fit. Oh. And you were God. headed your way Cat, down. Why, down. why are you disrespectful? Bro, I'm just I'm visual visualizing this in my I head. was dressed with a suit and a tie. And yes, I, I think I had and on jeans, some true, religion, jeans, true religion, true religion, and jeans, jeans. For some reason, jeans, you were dressed with a suit, tie, a jacket with jeans and some football cliques on. Football I don't know why cliques. you have football cliques on. The fuck you did ridiculous. what you did. You're ridiculous. Yeah. Go ahead. So anyway, we went down. Tell your got to, We got down to Rick Flair room. And I mean, you could tell the rest. You could tell them what happened if you want to, because I'm. It was embarrassing for you, it not was, me. It was, it was extremely embarrassing, but I'm going to preface everything by saying all of the meetings that he and I had, to and including the fourth time when you and I were backstage in Raw in Atlanta in 2016 in August, one of the first events you and I actually went to together before the culmination of the Cat's Corner podcast, um, prior to him having his stroke, and almost dying. Man, come on, don't, don't, you don't have and to. And I'm just that telling you, like, that's a problem. No, that part, I'm not going to do that. Part of that computer Rick, is listen, wrong. Listen, part of that Rick, computer is deleted. Rick, listen, Rick, Rick is one of my friends. I'm not going to let you put him down and not tell lies down. on just him. Speaking the that's, truth. He's a, Rick is a healthy, healthy, healthy guy now. He's in good shape. He is. I mean, he probably bench pressed more Dude. than you. So anyway, I don't, I don't, so, I, don't so, I wouldn't go that damn far. So enough. in a way, in a way, we got to his room. You walking in front of me for some reason. I don't know why, because you think you're more than what you really are. You know well, what I'm I saying? Mean, that, you're maybe. always putting yourself over. Maybe you're always so. trying to get over. You're always trying to just out talk everybody. But I let you do what you do. Go ahead and walk in front. You said Ric Flair is your man. We came to Ric Flair's door. Soon as you try to walk in, his security put his hand right, almost like the undertaker, put his hand right on that fat neck and say, Hey, where he you going, sir? Me. He just said you he, can't he'd come in. He'd stop you. He'd stop you. He said, oh, Where you going? Did he look around something? Oh, okay. oh, there go cat. Come on in, cat. Y'all come on in. And you walked in front of him again. And and we looked ahead and we saw Rick approaching with another bodyguard, security guy. I thought for sure you guys would go look at each other's eyes. And you remember that old thing where two people fall in love and they be running towards each other, give each other a hug? It's like you reached out to say, Rick, and I think his bodyguard put his hand in your face and moved you to the side. And but said, hey, like cat. He but right what did he me. do? What did he do? I went he, like went right, he, he, he opened his hand to give Rick a hug. And Rick went right past you and did what? Shook your hand. Gave me a hug. Hey, Cat, how you doing? Well, I just remember checking you. I don't remember y'all hugging, but whatever. And then, then we, we do that every time because we work together every many time. years. Every we time. work together. We work together. Man, I don't know why you want to hate on me. This is my career. Being a wrestler and being around celebrity and people that you look up to, that's just, that just what I do. I'm letting you be a part of this. By being you on let the Cat's me Corner be a part podcast. Of, man, I'm so thankful. You understand what I'm saying? I am so thankful. I see, am. I, see, this I is what happened morning. right here. After I thank God, I go over to my to my cat figure that I have over there and I and I and I yeah, go let's down talk about this. this. Okay, let's finish this story. So by the way, Rick did not recognize you. He did all. He didn't say anything to you. He went he right hello. past you, gave me he a hug. He said hello, but that was, me a hug. was very, very gave me cold. A hug. He didn't even say hello. I yes, said, Rick, this is, I doing? said, Rick, this is this is one of my friends. And he looked at you and said hello, shook your hand. And then you walked out of the room like a sad little lady. Yeah. And you said, and you said what? F Rick. F, F Rick. Rick Flair. That's what I said. He was Fuck angry. He was a yeah. angry. But Ain't then, but then, but then I thought about it, and I thought, well, in his defense, hey, bro, now I don't want you he was to say in a that coma. Con. He was hey, in a bro, coma, and every, bro, how am I going to expect hey, him hey, to remember hey, me on Ray, three, three Ray, or four occasions? Ray, Ray you can't say that. That, that it means that, more that, to me than it did to him. Ray, do you know you can get sued? 
you putting out medical stuff out there that you don't know. Everybody, this is public knowledge. Go That's Google it. That's not public knowledge. Well, Google it's not it. public knowledge. Suppose so, somebody want to get Rick and pay Rick to come times, and work. How many okay, times? All right, all right, all right. I'm just saying, it's, how it's many okay. times has Rick told the story about his body shutting down and he had an obstruction in his in his gut? But he's not using that. He's not using that every chance he get to prove that he got something wrong with him. I ain't there's something wrong, wrong with him. I'm saying that would cloud one's memory of somebody that he barely knew. It ain't How like about he didn't know at all. But okay. anyway, let's he get, went from, let's get, he went, let's we get, went from hey, four Ray, encounters Ray, that he don't Ray, know me at all. Great. Well, he That's didn't cool. know you. Let's say he didn't know you that day. He didn't know me on the West coast. He only knows he didn't East know you coast, that Ray. day. East he coast, didn't know baby. You that day. East coast, Ray. He don't know West coast. He knows East coast. That's all right. All right. I get so, it. so, so, Big Ray. That, what about the listen. first time I met you? What about it? I mean, tell, do, you, do, I, you I, remember, listen, do you remember? Do you remember? I want to know how you became such a fan of the cat. Now, I, do I'm you on remember? your side. I'm on your team. Do you remember? You know, it, it came down to who was going to be my co-host. It was going to be a white guy, Ray, or it going to be a black guy. And I decided to go with the cracker. <laughs> so disrespectful. So disrespectful. Hey, bro, you done called me the N word before, too. I have never I know called you have. the N word. Yes, Nasty. you did. Nasty. No, no, you done called me the N word. <laughs> you the guy angry. You done called me that time I beat Sting in the Negligent. middle of the ring. You call, you said, How in the world can that end <laughs> be the superstar like Sting in the ring? I know you have. At least you wrote it down. You probably didn't say it because you I coward. said it under my breath, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. You wrote it down. I was like, mm. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, do you remember the first time we met? Do you do you remember signing the I don't autograph? want to worry about I don't worry about the first time we met. When did you become a fan of the cat? Well, you know, the first time I saw you leap out of the audience and come in there and, and do all them kicks, I'm like, and Bobby the Brain was freaking out, like, who is this oh, guy? Yeah. He's out of the audience. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's Ernest the Cat Miller right there. That's a karate man, a real karate man. And then, you know, from there, you know, they started building a story around you. But I would say when you first did your first promo and you started talking crap to all the people, telling them, fat, sit down, fat boy. How you get your big ass in here anyway? And, uh, all them, all them, uh, all them sayings that reminded me a lot of Muhammad Ali and Look, that. That's all it was. See, you, you, that's one good thing about you, man. You, I think you've watched every wrestling show on Monday and Thursday night since nineteen ninety five. Well, since it started, yeah, a lot longer than that, but yeah. I w mean, from WCW days all the way to WCW, the WWE. W uh all of them, world class championship wrestling on ESPN. I watched it all, man. I was the eat up from the feet up from some wrestling. So, man, so, so 1975. Gonna, you know, I call you a super mark. I call I call you a, a fan. But I want people to really know out there who's listening to this podcast that you a real true to non fan. I mean, you actually watch wrestling. You're a fan, fan of wrestling. Yeah. All, all you're a true fan. That. Yeah, and you were just you you were tough to take sometimes, you know, with with all that rhetoric talking about fat people and stuff. And I and, didn't just talk about fat people. I talked about everybody, bro. <laughs> that mean I'm embarrassed to say that because I'm a good church going guy. I'm a are you born again Christian? And here I am putting God people down like y'all was trash. Trash. Man, I'm, I'm so glad I'll to hear you're born in, again. I will go in and trash the whole town. Not just not just who's in the hey bro, if you gonna wipe your nose, I mean what's wrong with you? You, you I got, keep wiping I got some your allergies. Nose. I got some allergies. You sure some allergies? What's that white powder on the nose right there? Well, I was hanging out with uh I was hanging out with one of your boys. Who? And uh Eric, Eric Tomasuno. Oh my goodness, don't put that on him. You might no, get sued. You put a, you might get sued out here talking like that. I just that's you. Know what, you. I'm asking you, free. I'm my asking you a question. Free. I'm asking you a question. I don't know what the guy no, did. No, no, you no. You say no, you were no. hanging out with your friend. It wasn't one of my friends. One of your boys. One of your boys had some. See, of that there stuff. you go. It had to be one of my boys. One of your boys had this. Who? I can't tell. I won't tell. Okay. All right. You know, hey, bro. By, by, by the way, stitches. by the way, you know, I decided to watch NXT. 
Well, goodness gracious, do tell and, you. And, and you know what? It was a kind of different show. It was almost more like a TV show than a wrestling match. Have you noticed that? Absolutely. It's formatted, it's formatted like a like a little soap opera. Yeah, they cut they got stuff going on in the back in the ring. They even got wrestling planted in the audience. Oh yeah. You know who runs that show, right? Who? The Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels. He's that's his that's his baby. They, they got look, the one thing I noticed, they got more black wrestlers on that than any other show. In the spotlight. WWE. In the spotlight, too. Yeah, that's not the spotlight because it's it's a it's a smaller venue. It's it's a startup for the new guys who are coming up, build up and working on uh their gimmicks. Right. Are working you're on, on the, the character. CW, man. You're on a network television show from eight to ten o'clock every Tuesday night. That is a I, you know what? Huge. Some of the guys, some of the guys I recognize in there that I saw that kind of entertained me a little bit was this guy Trick, Trick, Trick William. Whoop that trick. Whoop that, that trick. trick. Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. You know where that song came from? Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. I know it's a rap song. No, it's not a rap song. It comes from a a very good movie. What? It's hard I hear for a pimp. You never heard that song either, huh? What, See, they just putting everything over on you white folks. What you talking about? I got, you white you, folks I out there sucker? singing that song. Is it on I Get You Sucker? Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. I'm going to Google that because I know that's a, I know that's a rap song. But it's a song from a, a a really good movie. And now you got to go Google it, but you got just saying it and don't understand where it came from. Whoop That Trick song is from Hustle and Flow. Hustle and Flow, that one of the best movies out. It was a movie. It was with Terrence Howard, man, when I was and, out there. And, and Terrence, Terrence Howard was the... He was the producer. Man, it was a great movie, man. He and you know, he talked about... Job. He talk about he talk about that movie that he performed, acted, and did everything. And that song there actually did some uh, some good things for the movies. It did because DJ DJ he sung that song. Yeah, yeah, he did. It did some good things for the movie, man. He's a great actor, man. I really he one of my favorite actors. I love Terry you know. Tower. So so we looked at we looked at Trick. And I watched Trick perform. Well, he didn't do anything. He just had a uh, he had a face to face face off with uh, one of the other guys, Ethan Page. But he looked he looked so similar though to Swirl. Swerve. is it Swirl? What's his Swerve. name? Swerve. Yeah, Swerve in the uh, AEW. I swerve when I drive. I and you know, I never, I bro, bro. Can we have a conversation? That's all we want to do. All I'm that you don't I'm need all up. that. You don't need all that, man. All right, go ahead. Prince Nana do it. What you know about Prince Nana, his manager? You know they about to, you know he's about to clash with our boy um, Shelton Benjamin. Swerve is. They about to wrestle each other. Yeah. Show up. That's go. That's go. That's gonna be a good match. I think. I think so. Eventually. Eventually, I think those two going to end up in the same little clique. Called the Hurt Syndicate. But, you know, the, I mean, I wonder where his character came from because Swerve was once in AEW, too. Not AEW, but NXT, NXT. right? NXT, yeah. Yeah, and couldn't ever get to the main roster. Got frustrated I, and left. And I looked at Trick, Trick Williams. I don't see how he going to get to the main roster. The way oh, they bring him up, they he get... Going. He was no bigger than uh, Swerve. Well, he was the he's a small ref for some reason. He's a smaller kind of wrestler too. Wrestlers like that, especially a black one, don't really get to the top. That look like that. You got to look like like you a killer. You got to look like Ahmed Johnson. You got like, to be you know a who? huge big guy to well, get they, up they there. They got one of them too. Oh, who? One of what? Oba Femi. A big, a big what? Big black guy. Big, strong African brother. 
And he play an African kind of. I wonder if he's from Africa. If he, uh, is it just a gimmick? Well, let's find out. Well, you don't have to. You should know this. I'm not asking you this. But you know, watching next was fun. I enjoyed it because it was on TV. Largos, but, Nigeria. Oh, okay. So he he got hooked up with what's the girl name with the big old big old head, big old kicks, big old feet. Nikita. Nikita yeah, Lions. They, they look like they're getting ready to do something. But you know, most of the female wrestlers over there are all built like her. That must be something that John Michael liked. He liked them thick girls, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I just thought about that. You're right. Because remember, his wife, his wife was a nitro girl. Yeah. And she, she was just thick. built just like that, real thick. Really? Because she looked real yeah. skinny to me. Bro, she had never been skinny, not in WCW. She was like, she was like, um, she was thick. How how big do you think Oba, Oba Femi is? He he looked, you can't really tell on TV. TV put a little weight on you, 10 pounds. So I think he's huge. I it's think like, about six build. They got him built at 6'4 and 310 pounds. I got to see him in person. I mean, if, if he's so 300. Most likely he's, if they're billing him at that, so most likely he's 6'2 and a half, 285. That's still huge. That's yeah, still big. big. And the way big he boy. put together, the way he can move, if he's anywhere close to 280, 290, 300, he's a monster. Yeah, he is. He is. Now, he, he, there's, he's a non – to me, he's a, a no-miss prospect for, a, for the main roster. Would you agree from what you saw? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I, I like that too, but you know uh, – I like to see him. I like to see him a few more times. Just do what he did last night. I mean, he took he took apart three guys. I mean, he just he had Booker T going crazy out there. How you like Booker T on on color commentary? He's fun to listen to. He's hilarious to me. Shuck it, duck it, quack quack. <laughs> I've never heard him say that, but um, that's his. That's one of his sayings. Shuck it, duck it, quack quack. <laughs> yeah, and he's so raw. You know, he oh, just he, he did he he almost like uh on the NBA side of it. He almost like uh what's our guy name on him? Charles NBA? Barkley. Charles Barkley. He almost like Charles Barkley on that. And you just don't ever know what he's gonna say. And just raw. You they know what he's gonna say. Believe me, somebody at Gorilla telling him what to say and what not to say. That's, hey, bro, I don't know if that's true anymore now that Vince ain't there. I don't think well, they feed you hey, live. Hey, I'm there. I know what they do. Listen. Okay. I'm one. I'm one. I got people who work there. Vince is there, but Triple H is still there. If Triple H is there, Vince is still there. Let people Vince say what they want to say. Vince ain't there, man. Don't even say that. You make yourself look foolish. Don't say that. Okay. All right. You you understand you, what I'm talking you, you're about? My, you're my day. guy. I can't. I, I got. I got to stand in the gap. I'm. I'm, I'm not your guy. You my friend. Are we ain't friends now? Oh, that's how it's, it, it's it's come to this. You Ebony and Ivory are splitting. We're going a separate Ebony way. Ebony Ivory, come on, Big Ray. Big Ray, I only got you because I couldn't get anybody else for free. Chocolate and vanilla is no longer together. No, no, Big Ray, Big Ray. You gonna let strawberry? They come told me, them? they told me if you're gonna have a podcast, you need to have diversity. And I could only find one cracker. That'll let me call him so a cracker. So I'm the token whitey, huh? That's what you got. I ain't here. said the token whitey. I said cracker, cracker, cracker. Cracker, cracker, cracker ass, cracker with a cracker ass. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, let's get off that right there. I mean, next were pretty good. It was a better show than AEW. I think so. And that's why when they go head to head, NXT beats them every single time. And and this is my first time watching NXT. The production value is ten times better to me on NXT than on AEW. Just the whole 
the whole the way they tell the stories. I, I the like the stories. The I, it's it's like a TV show. It's like it's like watching a a, a sitcom. Yeah, and it, and you're only you there know? for two hours, so you're in and out. It's not that bad. What's the matter? It's like watching, just like watching a sitcom. I like that. What you drinking on? Coffee? No, just my water jug, brother. Is that a Stanley Cup? So anyway, you always on the cutting Big edge, Ray. cutting edge of fashion and technology. So Big Ray, so getting up, getting up NXT. All right, you well, can back talk up. about the talk. Back up. So no, I'll tell you what. I just now we can see you. You had your head in there. You were so yeah, bald. I could see I, what you was yeah, thinking. You you know because I had to do something to keep us going in the right direction, talking about the topics that we, okay. we wanted started with. You know, and um, NXT is one of them. You know, and and I I like NXT. I I think I'm gonna watch that a little bit more because it, it's just like watching a TV show. You watch, you got some wrestling going on, but they got stuff going on behind the scene. Uh, they got a new commissioner. I forgot. I, I wonder if, is is the Rock daughter is she still there? What's she's her the name? she's she's the commissioner. Um, oh, that's her. She, yeah, she, that's her. Hey, listen, she is tall. Yeah, she a big girl. Yeah, big girl. man, because I was noticing some of the wrestlers that were coming into her office. Well, you know, and, Danny, uh, Danny, his first wife, she's a big lady. I mean, like, when I say big, not fat, like muscle. You know, if you've seen them on camera together, Dwayne is, what, 6'4"? Yeah. She's, yeah, yeah. She's like six foot yeah. herself. So, she's a big so lady. So most... Most of the wrestlers, the male wrestler that were coming into our office last night on the show, mm -hmm. she was eye to eye with them. I was like, I didn't know she was that tall. Yeah, she's 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 in good shape. She's I don't know if she's hurt or if they're just grooming her to get her more comfortable in front of the camera. She seemed pretty comfortable yesterday. So she was she a wrestler seemed, at one time. She was in yeah. a, a faction and um with Gacy and a couple of other people. Um, I can't never remember the name of it because it's such an exotic name for what she was in. But um, either way, she's uh, she's she's very talented. I think that they're going to push her as time goes on because, you know, with Rock being on the board of directors and stuff, you know he's going to look after his girl. See, but that, can't, that right there can't go on anymore. Favoritism towards family member that working in a company. You can't do that. You can't do that anymore. If it's warranted, I mean, if she's talented, you got to push her. But how do you know she's talented if you're trying to place her somewhere where she can show that talent? Well, don't you think they placed her at NXT as being like the pseudo commissioner and well, let's just say they the ho hopefully they placed her there because she fit the part, not trying to find fit into it. But she she was the commissioner. When I became commissioner, it was because they weren't trying to get me over. They just said this be a good part for him. Weren't this you also a good part nursing a knee injury? Weren't you coming back from a knee injury? Yeah. Yeah. And they so wanted that, you on camera because you your face and your rhetoric could, equaled I, I ratings. Could've, I could have been a manager. I could have been a manager. I could have been a referee. You could have been the first MVP. No, that, how are you going to be the first MVP if that was Ernest the Cat Miller? That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying you could have been a manager like MVP. Yeah, I could have managed somebody. I, it was a lot of stuff I could have could have done. But it turned I out like, pretty I good. I liked your role. I liked your role as commissioner. You kept it moving. You 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 know you go out there and, and straighten out the mess that uh, the writers would have when there would be conflict in the ring. You would always go out there and you would say, "I have spoken." Yeah, get so out of here. That was so, 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 so you know, I was watching football. Let's let's go. I just like to drop off and go to the NFL. We got nice a couple. Of, we got a couple of NFL players on our podcast before. We had uh, Rory Graves, great Ohio State player, played KD. three four year with the Raiders. Yeah, we had Kendrick Dunn, you know, play with Tampa, New York Jets. Now, New Washington York Jets, Redskins. Was, yeah, he he won, and he's coming out this week. 
but he won a Super Bowl ring with Washington Redskins. He yep. got to play with one of my favorite players. Who? John Riggins? Doug Williams. Oh, Big Doug. Big Doug, throw Big that football. Doug. He won my favorite football. But but you know when you when you think about football, man, back in those days, the New York Jets, one of my favorite. I went up there. I, I tried out with the New York Jets in, in 1987. You know, it was exciting just to be a part of the green machine, you know, and uh Game opportunity, green, baby. opportunity to be a part of it. But when you look at it today, man. I asked myself two questions watching the game Monday night. Why did Aaron Rodgers go to New York Jets or go to New York? And why did a Jets quarterback coach a head coach allow him to come? Did he think he was going to pull a Tom Brady? Like Tom Absolutely. Brady left New England? It went, went to, to Tampa, Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl. Yeah. And won the Super Bowl, right? Right? Yeah. I mean, Tom Brady's attitude was totally different than Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers' attitude is just like he just, it's all about him. I, um, uh, is, that, uh, is that just the way? It looks that way sometimes. I, I can see where somebody would say that. But honestly, I think he wants to win. I think, you know, it was unfortunate the first Set or the third play of the game last year in the very first game on Monday Night Football, he tears his Achilles and he's out for the whole year. So he's working his way back. And this is like game six or game. Hey, five. when you're 40 years old, when you're 40 years old, you're not oh. working your way back. You're working your way out of this. Oh, I think, I think right now, I don't know if he gave up on the team or if the team just given up on him, but he have not been looking good. And some of it is not his wasn't his fault. Well, yeah, like you hit the guy in the chest with the ball, it bounces off, and the Steeler intercepts it. Man, that's not on the quarterback. He hit the guy in his hands like two or three hey, times. That, that, that's drops. still listen, it's part on is part on the receiver, but then it's part on that quarterback too. Maybe he well, could have threw the ball. Share some responsibility. Maybe he should have he could have thrown the ball a little softer. Cut that ball hit off his chest, man. Hit off his chest like it, it came off a brick wall. Well, he, high. he's got a cannon. Yeah. So I look at look at watching New York Jets, man. And I'm chill. but Pittsburgh still is my team. I thought he's, Atlanta he's my Falcons team. was your team. Atlanta Falcons is not my team. Atlanta, I mean Atlanta Falcons. I'm a little upset because I really wanted the Falcons to take that combination of uh, quarterback. That Pittsburgh still did. I want them to take Fields. I want them to take Russell Wilson. I wanted them to take all the the two quarterback. I mean, I looked at Field being the quarterback of the future. That's why I looked at him. he gonna go on forward after after one or two. Man, did he's not Russell Wilson? I just think Russell Wilson not only can Russell Wilson use what talent. He have in front of him. He also hold on to the ball. He don't fumble much. Well, Russell's had a pretty mid, as the kids say these days, mid last three years. But I'll be honest with you: the first quarter he was shaky. Second quarter he started dialing it in, and after halftime he was a completely different player. They so what do you say? They heard, what do you they say? Heard, they hung thirty-seven points on the on that Jets defense, which is hard to do because the Jets got a pretty good defense. But they, I know, but but let me tell you, he really Russell played Wilson his have, off. Russell Wilson have not played a game since December, yeah, twenty twenty-three. So yeah. he was still rusty. That's what you call rust. Oh yeah, trying to get that rust off you. So I don't even look at that. I look at what he ended up. He ended up doing everything. Oh yeah, he went. He was good. Everything good. we we wanted him to do. Yeah, we. Here we go. Hey, what one of those losses to uh, 
You a grown thing. man. You mean tell me you a grown man who do not play for the Dallas Cowboy, but you were walking around at work with a Dallas Cowboy star on your t shirt. It ain't a t shirt, it's a zip up, but whatever. Um yeah, I'm a Dallas Cowboy tried and true, baby. Five time, five time, five time, five time, five time Super Bowl champion. You know, if if if, if I would tell him my my brother right now, he's a big Atlanta Atlanta Falcons fan. I'm sorry. And he was trying to he loved the Falcons and he all he believed in them until they let him down. And I told him that to make Atlanta the winning team that the fans want, they're going to have to do some soul searching. They're going to have to do some root digging. They're going to have to dig up the root and get rid of it and replant the whole tree. And what does that mean? They're going to have to get rid of their owner. Not because, they're, listen, listen, Arthur Blanks is good for the city. He's good for the city. But is he good for football here? He he a billionaire who put the money put it put his money where his mouth is. But we're talking about we need somebody that's going to interfere with the team to tell the coach you're not doing your job. Tell the people and I mean just take control. That's the you Dallas want a Cowboy. Jerry Jones? You want I a want Jerry, a Jerry Jones? Jones. Bro, if Jerry Jones was Atlanta owner, I guarantee Atlanta would be on that winning streak. Cause they got listen, this guy pay all the money. Arthur Blank give them all the money they need to go get Jerry the players to be nobody. good. He give them all the money they need to go and get the players they need. Well, you got a great coach. You got a great quarterback. The coach is okay. The coach is okay. You you the back co- up the quarterback. Co- Michael Penix is going to be a superstar whenever he gets a chance. How you know? Because he's good. He probably How you one know of the he's best. good. He's, he probably he throws one of the best deep balls in the league right now. Prettiest, he one of the prettiest deep them, balls. Bro, he haven't played in one game yet. That's all right. He got a little bit of action last week. Not much. How many plays did he play? Two or three. I can't remember, but something okay, like then. that. It wasn't, that, it wasn't all that impressive to me. Well, I mean, you, you're just getting in, and man. Kirk, getting, and Kirk getting Cubs a come, is getting all... A come, getting a come, getting a come. Acclimated to the speed of the game. That's what they say. The game is faster than college. See, so see, you got to adjust. This is what, how you know you played an NFL game before? I'm a, I'm a savant, baby. I know about, a lot about a lot of things. And I know that the NFL is faster position for position than in college. So when you come out of college, you have to adjust for the speed. And when they say when it finally clicks and the game slows down for you, then you become really good at your position. Like when it slowed down for Tom Brady, he took over. Think about it. I think they just figured out the plays that Tom Brady was good at. Let, let, he moved the pocket a little bit, but he's not going to roll out. No, he ain't a runner. He's so, a pocket passer. So it, it, it's just like Kirk Cousin. Kirk Cousin is a good throwing quarterback in the pocket, but Kirk Cousin is not going to move the pocket, like Atlanta wanted to. He's not a rollout kind of guy. He's every not time Michael he roll Vick. out, problem. Yeah, every time he roll out, there's problems. On the, he fumbled the ball. He hold the ball too long. So Kirk Cousins, they gonna figure him out. Sound Some like you a fan? If, you, if you're looking at it that deep, you sound like a fan of Atlanta. They gonna figure him out. They gonna figure that this guy. It can only throw from the pocket, so let's make him move the pocket, move out the pocket, and then they're going to tackle him. It's, it's they're going to collapse it's, the pocket on him. Collapse the pocket on him because, you know, I look at Atlanta and Atlanta defense. Atlanta defense going to get figured out too. A.J. is not the is not the cornerback that they want him to be. He just got made look mad. Listen, Seattle – that big receiver they have, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf, he made him look like a kid. He made him look like AJ he grown. Back out. Yeah, like I'm a grown man playing he with a little growing, boy. He is grown though. He is grown. He so anyway, grown. I'm I, I'm just waiting to see. And like Did I you? said, I, Pittsburgh Steelers. That's who I wanted. That's my team. 
I All wanted right. that crew of quarterbacks. Well, have you watched? Have you watched? Have you watched the Ravens this year play? Oh, they are ball. They are balls, man. That I, I love watching them. That big old running back, Derrick Henry. I did not listen. He looked just as fast as Eric Dickinson and Herschel Walker back in oh, those days. Once he hit the sideline, you give that but, boy a seam, he gone. He don't even need to see. He beat on you, beat on you until you don't want to stand in front of that. No you more. don't want to stand in front of him. You don't want to stand. Up. And then he runs straight up, just like Eric Dickinson with that beautiful strive. He runs straight up. Did you and, see him run and, that 80, 82 yard run the other night? He broke. He right ran through. 82. Years. And the only way the guy called him because he was coming Shoe from an angle. And did yeah, you look how him down. did you? And did you look how much how large he was when he was running? How much bigger he was than the than the defensive guy that would chase? Yeah. He was out running defensive backs. I'm still mad because he wanted to play for the Cowboys, and it only cost eight million dollars a year to get him. Oh my goodness! Got a house, got a house in Dallas. Wanted to play for the star, and Jerry passed on him. I'm like, why? Why? He's hey, worth listen. eight million. Let's let's tell the people why. Let's let the people know they listening to the Cat's Corner podcast. Yes, they are. Like and subscribe. Hit the like button. Subscribe. subscribe. And hey, if you got a little extra jingle for the jangle, throw it in, <laughs> throw it in the pot. <laughs> yeah, listen, the Cat's Corner man, we bringing we bringing some conversation to everybody. We want y'all to listen to us and tell us what you want to hear. When, who are you you want to who, when are you going to announce what you're doing next? We we'll do that in a couple of couple of more episodes. So when they get a little closer to that date, well, it's getting pretty close. November. Well, we don't we don't need to let the world know until it's time to know. And you keep your mouth shut. You hear me? All right. I just think that people would like to know what you up. Keep to. doing that. You're fired. You can't threaten me. You can't fire me. I will quit. You can't fire somebody who don't care. I start my own podcast called The Shug's Corner. Then what? <laughs> then what? <laughs> the Sugar Show. Call what, the what, 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 you, what you going to do? Hey, I'm hey. going to see you in Atlanta. This going to be hell, boy. I'm bro, telling I'm you now. Your, listen, there going to be some right furniture now, moving. Bro, when, when, when I see you, it's going to be a misunderstanding. I'm telling yeah. you right now, you better run. Come, you better cover head, up. You. you better do this. When I see I'm on, you. and I am. I'm not gonna even wear the shoes. Look down at my feet. Mm -hmm. If I'm bare, if I don't have any shoes on, them old I'm corn, telling you, I'm gonna kick. Feet. I'm gonna kick your head right off your neck. I'm gonna grab one of them curled up corn toes and I'm gonna snap it <laughs> off and eat it like a snap. And beat. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull that little patch of toupee right off the top of your head. Come get I'm it. I'm gonna shake it around. Come get it, baby. You look Don't like that coach. I got you look like ball. you look like that coach from Texas. The Texas oh, Sar Texas Sarkeesian. Longhorn. Sarkeesian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know the well, shark. Anyway, he, Big hey, Ray, the shark like to drink back in the day. Now, and Big Ray, listen, we kept everything. Let's not get off. Let's not get all off right, course. All right, all right. We all kept right. everything. You got to go now. anyway. You got a big meeting coming up. Yeah, I got to get up out of here, brother. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining me here on the Cats Corner. I hate like we didn't I get said, to talk in the NBA. Yeah. We'll talk NBA next time. Uh, like, like, like I said, go to YouTube, subscribe to the Cats Corner podcast. Like and, and subscribe. we'll let you know whenever we on, and uh, we'll see you soon. And vote for me, November the fifth. Big should the only candidate with balls. All right, good to talk to you, Cat. Good luck at your meeting. <laughs>